Welcome, everybody. It's another edition of the podcast for the Journal of Lifestyle Medicine. I'm Sven Hosford, the managing editor, and uh, this is a uh, our website and our podcast is really a collaboration of journalists and wellness professionals working together. We've got some really exciting things happening in that vein today and in the very near future. Uh, very soon, like in the end of this week or early next week, we're going to see the new issue of the print version of our magazine, the summer issue, and that will feature a cover story by our friend Dan Wagner talking about the end of antibiotics. And we'll also feature some stories by Dr. Dennis Courtney on ozone therapy, and we have Dr. Louis Melmadrona talking about the power of story. Some really, really good articles coming up in the print issue. And... Uh, one of those articles will be by a woman named Kate Kill. She is our guest today. Uh, Kate is the, uh, uh, the director of the Himalayan Institute in Mount Lebanon. We're going to talk about all things yoga here on May 27th. You can watch us every Tuesday, as a reminder, at 4 p.m. right here on the Journal of Lifestyle Medicine and live.sorgatronmedia.com. We're in the capable hands of one Michael, I live in the future, Sorg. He's our engineer here at the Sorgatron Studios, and it's always a pleasure to be here working with him. As I said, uh, Kate is uh, the director of the Himalayan Institute, and uh, we'll be talking to her very soon. I actually got ahead of myself a little bit there. So first, before we get to Kate, I want to talk about our new sponsor. Yes, a sponsor. Somebody actually uh, likes us. They really, really like us, and we really like them. And that is the Organically Social. It's a it's a brand new social network. It's uh, think about the entertainment book, but just for health and wellness professionals. And it's a card instead of a book. Uh, it's a really, really interesting and exciting new idea. And he's going to be working with uh, the the organization. It's going to be a network of really a whole bunch of health and wellness professionals in all kinds of areas. So. Look, get on over to getorganicallysocial.com and check that out, and we'll have a lot more information about that as the cards come available here in the summer. So uh, next we're going to talk about our calendar. We always uh, start to show a little bit about what's happening in the next few weeks here in the Pittsburgh area. And one of the big things is the visit by Pandachi, and that's a, what we call a Pandit Rajmani Tiganat. He is the spiritual head uh, of the Himalayan Institute. And uh, very exciting, and we'll talk a whole lot about that in the, in the show when we get Kate up here. Uh, we also want to talk about an open house that's happening at the Centerpoint Sleep Centers. This is another really exciting development. The Centerpoint Sleep Centers are becoming, uh, they're opening up into lifestyle medicine. And so they're taking this office space, which is basically only used at night, and they're going to open it up and let uh, share, uh, create a kind of a shared office space arrangement with uh, any lifestyle medicine professionals, integrative medicine, holistic, uh, anything that's uh, of interest to you. It's got a great professional office space and uh, medical billing support and uh, marketing support and all sorts of things are, are there for people who uh, qualify and, and uh, want to get involved in that. So that is going to be coming up on June 26th. It's also going to be a part of the meetup for the integrative medicine professionals. We're calling all the meetup uh, gang. Uh, we have like 120 people now in our meetup group. Uh, go to meetup.com, integrative medicine professionals, and look for that. Uh, coming up on July 26th is the World Magazine Yoga Fest. Uh, all things yoga, all people yoga, all kinds of really fun things happening right at the point. Uh, my good friend Jack Thompson, uh, publisher of World Magazine, and his crew are putting that together. A uh, lot of fun things happening. Uh, I know Jack is a real dedicated yoga person, and we always like to see lots of yoga things happening in Pittsburgh. So, And speaking of yoga, let's get right to our guest, Kate Kill. She is the director of the Himalayan Institute in Mount Lebanon. It's an affiliated with the international organization, the Himalayan Institute, which is based in uh, the Poconos, actually near Scranton. A lot of people uh, find it uh, interesting that a uh, very enlightened worldwide organization is based in Scranton. Kate, what's the what's the story with that? We need enlightened people everywhere, <laughs> so why not Scranton too? I'd say so, but uh, you've spent a lot more time there than I have. But I I find that place is just one of the most peaceful and relaxing and uh, restorative places I've ever been to. 
It's beautiful. It's beautiful. They have wonderful food. It's on 180 acres, so there's lots of trails for hiking. And, you know, you learn so much about the deeper aspects of yoga and different yoga techniques. It's just wonderful to be there. Yeah. And I want to start, actually, that's a good place to start with your uh, article for this next issue of the uh, print version of our magazine. It's called uh, Many Brands, One Yoga. And uh, basically, you talk about how there, you know, there's a lot of branding of yoga now with all the different techniques, and there's a little slice of a very big pie. But there at the Himalayan Institute, you really try to include the whole pie, and there's no part of yoga that's excluded. Is that about right? That's right. You know, yoga, when it comes down to it, is about resting in your true nature. So mm. all of these practices that we do just help us get closer to being able to rest with our peaceful center, uh, whether it's meditation or asana or watching our breath. All of these are in service of letting the mind become still and letting it rest um, and having, you know, increasing the amount of peace that we have. Yeah. One of the things I found so amazing about being at the, the main office there is that there's no peer pressure. There's, you know, you're allowed to do whatever you want to do. There's no pressure to, oh, did you go to this class or did you take that yoga or were you there for this? And, you know, a lot of places that you go for spiritual retreat, there's a lot of well-meaning people who get very enthusiastic about their practice or the teacher or this modality or whatever. And they get very excited about encouraging you to do that. And there just doesn't seem to be any of that at, at the home office there. And it's not because they're not enthusiastic about it. It's because they, there is tr truly an honoring of every person needs to do exactly what they want to do at that moment. Is, is that your, is that your take on it? It's true. It's true. Um, our founder, Swami Rama tells a story where he went to his master and he had all of these questions for him about what his practice should be and uh, the nature of reality. And his master said to him, where are all these questions coming from? And he said, well, they just come from inside me somewhere. And he said, well, that's where you'll find the answers too. <laughs> and that seems to be what we're doing. You know, you have to look inside and if someone tells you it wouldn't be as meaningful anyways. So um, they're there to inspire, to support you along your journey, um, but uh, the journey is yours. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if we can do anything, put in a little bit of effort uh, to sit and meditate and find ways to connect with that peaceful place inside of us, uh, but it's really up to us. Mm -hmm. And you're, uh, one of the things we're going to be talking about today is the new book by uh, Pandachi, the spiritual head of the Himalayan Institute. And uh, it, it truly is just, I think, his very best book so far. I mean, it's just it's so absorbing and so amazing. And, and the first thing that really struck me is the, how he talks about, uh, and we talked about this at the study group the other night, how this is a living, the Yoga Sutra is a living text that it keeps, well, you described that. What is a living text and how does it keep staying alive? A living text is passed from teacher to student within a tradition, and it's kept alive by the practices. So as we do these practices that we're taught, and sometimes they can be very, very simple practices of watching the breath and uh, creating a sensitivity um, to the energy within us, uh, as we do that, we are carrying on the tradition. So um, from one teacher to the next, um, sometimes the tradition is really big. And sometimes it's, it kind of shrinks and it's not so big, but it has stayed throughout the centuries, um, passed down from one teacher to the next. And, and the Himalayan Institute really has sought out to collect as many uh, and as much of the yogic tradition as they can uh, to preserve it and to honor it and to keep it as a living text. I mean, the place is amazing, yeah. right? It, 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 they do, yes, yeah, and you know, um, if you do your practice, uh, they, they do come and give you more and more teachings along the way, so that you never get tired of it. You keep growing. There's never um, an end to the growth opportunity available. <laughs> you you just keep growing and changing and incorporating more of the teachings into your life, 
and you start to uh, see the effects of yoga, not just on your yoga mat or on your meditation cushion, uh, but you start to see it in your relationships uh, and people around you. Uh, life becomes more beautiful. Well, and that's really the core of yoga. I mean, Americans have this idea that yoga is just tying yourself up in a pretzel and in, in physical poses, but truly yoga is the union of everything. So all spirituality, all life, all your relationships, all that is the everything um, is, is a part of your yoga practice. As you said, it's off the mat. It's true. Yeah. You know, yoga means the union and at first it means the union of our body our uh, breath and our mind our soul um, all of those are connected but then you start to see that yeah you're not the only one out there and there's a lot of other people with all these parts working together and uh, you, you feel part of a bigger bigger reality going on yeah. you see your place a little bit more clearly and there's like you said there's always more to learn there's always more more to unionize, <laughs> to coin a phrase. <laughs> it is amazing. You keep learning, and life gets better every step of the way. Yeah. You just become more and more peaceful, more and more happy, and uh, you know the people around you. You start with yourself, but that energy radiates out into the people around you. Yeah, yeah. So uh, for people who are not familiar, why don't you uh, spend a minute or so t talking about exactly what the Yoga Sutra is, the original uh, document or writings by Patanjali? Sure. Uh, the Yoga Sutra is a book about practice and the practice that you, that you find in yoga. Uh, it's hard to say exactly when it was written, but you know, for uh, simplicity's sake, around 250 B.C., and um, it was meant to um, kind of compound uh, the yoga philosophy and Sankhya philosophy um, and the practice, how to uh, realize this union with uh, the Supreme Consciousness and how to feel that we really are the Supreme Consciousness and not all of the uh, kind of petty things that we identify with in our daily life. Mm. So um, it's a system, and mainly the main two ways that you realize this is through practice and non-attachment. Mm -hmm. So you practice um, resting in a more uh, peaceful uh, vibration, either with your breath or with a mantra. Uh, there's many different ways to meditate. That's the pra practice uh, element. And then the non-attachment, uh, you start to see uh, some negative habits or just some things that aren't working for you. Uh, there's really, it's, it's not very negative. It's always seeing things as they are. And sometimes when you start to see what you're doing uh, from a more objective standpoint, you realize, you know, you're doing the same things for a while. And it's just not working anymore. So you try different options and uh, that's how you grow. You start to just really see things in the world for what they are. Um, and the energy behind them. And, you know, sometimes we all still get triggered, but it happens less often. Well, and it's amazing, too, how you're describing a system and a process that, you know, was only first written down 2,500 years ago or so, and, and it's still um, so relevant to our lives today. I mean, it's so pertinent. I mean, we're, we're in a society where rest, and, and as you say, resting in your true nature is even more important than it may have been back then. Yeah, you know, um, with everybody being so busy, we are so much uh, either in the future, worrying about think how things are going to turn out, um, worried, you know, where our professional lives, our personal lives are going, or in the past, going over the stories again and again, that we don't rest in the present, and we're not just... Um, noticing how our body feels, how our breath is, we miss the beauty around us because our minds are so identified with the past and the future. Yeah. So here's this, this piece of literature, let's call it that, that was written over 2,000 years ago. And even then, it was only an attempt to put in writing what was had been passed down as a verbal tradition for we think thousands of years before that is is that about right too that's right yeah it's a compilation it's not new it wouldn't have been new at the time patanjali wrote it 
it is a collab, you know, a collection of ideas that were already there. And, you know, he codified it so that it would reach, you know, or become more, I guess, accessible to the people in his day and age. Right. And it turned out that that worked all the way down the line until now. There's some real gems, whether it's oh. about the practice, about how we act with the people around us. Um, you know, it really, there's only 200, they call them sutras, but they're really like a sentence or just kind of a thought. And there's less than 200 of these in the entire book, but it, you know, encompasses so much. Right. Now, that's the interesting part, too, is that we're just reading this in English, and mm -hmm. the Pandachi is a PhD in Sanskrit. He is, uh, mm -hmm. and not only that, he's just brilliant, absolutely brilliant, and uh, a, a, a master yogi of his own nature, of, of his own right, just from his own practice. So here you combine mm -hmm. this towering intellect and this, you know, incredible uh, research that he's been doing for years and years and years. And... Mm -hmm in all of that to understand the yoga sutras because it's actually written originally in sanskrit so what i love about the book and i, I should hold this up so people can see this is the um the new book the one of first of four i guess we should say too because this only covers the first 50 of the sutras right <laughs> that's right that's chapter one that's chapter one <laughs> so they're so condensed to take you know thousands of years of history and take it down into 200 sentences, they're so condensed that it, it seems to me that the the uh, the Sanskrit and, and getting the subtleties from the Sanskrit and the, the more you can understand the Sanskrit really leads to help understand the, the sutras in their original form and, and what the true meaning is that we're just trying to yeah, get correct. from the English. You know, San Sanskrit is, is so interesting because um, every word, and not even every word, but every root that you find in one word there may be a couple different roots they you know it it is an idea it's a um it's there's there's more you can't really translate it it, it encompasses a lot of things so Pataji is very uh well versed and he really knows a lot about the sanskrit and you know one thing that we try to do in pittsburgh is we do have classes in sanskrit where we start to learn the characters of the Sanskrit language and start to learn the familiar roots that you see over and over again. Um, and when you know a little bit more about it, uh, and, and that's another interesting thing about this book, it's not, they have the Sanskrit characters, then they have what they would sound like in English, a transliteration, right. and then there's a translation of what that might mean in English. Right. So depending on what level you're studying at, if you just, you don't know the sutras at all yet, and you want to read the English version, that's a great place to start. If you have begun your study of Sanskrit, and, you know, you want to become more familiar with the roots, they're all in there, too. So the book uh, could be a study companion for years and years to come. It really is. And there have been many um, explanations of the Yoga Sutra. There's many scholars that have, have tackled this subject. So this is not a new subject, even as a translation, but for those of us that know Pandachi and have studied with him and have learned from him, it's, it's, it's truly an amazing book. I, I, it's really one of the most fascinating spiritual books I've read uh, in years. Well, you know, I think what makes it different is it is from Pandachi's experience, uh -huh. and so much of the yoga, uh, you know, the, the knowledge of yoga, the meaning is revealed through practice. Right. So you can know something intellectually, but when you start to practice it, you understand it in a whole new way. And I think the fact that Panaji has done that kind of a practice, um, it, he understands and, and breathes life into these words that, you know, in a way that we may not be able to, uh, just because we haven't practiced as much as, you know, as long as he has or, you know, as intensely. So we're, I'm very much looking forward to this. So this is going to be on uh, June 20th. Uh, and what day of the week mm -hmm. is that? Is it Friday night? That's a Friday night, and it's at um, CMU, Carnegie Mellon University, okay. in Rango's Hall. So it's pretty centrally located for Pittsburgh um, folks to, to come out and check it out. Um, 
you know, uh, we'll have books there for sale. Um, Panaji will do uh, a lecture, a little bit of a talk about the book. He'll also do a guided practice where we uh, learn a simple practice um, that's just very, very powerful. It's called Pranadharana. Uh, and, you know, you experience that connection with your peaceful center just very simply through this um, very easy practice. So he'll be showing us that, too. Yeah. So you're at uh, the uh, Himalayan Institute in Mount Lebanon. So all of that wisdom and knowledge from the home office is uh, contained in just a little bit smaller version there in Mount Lebanon on Beverly Road. What else do you have uh, going on besides uh, the Pandaji visit in June? Well, um, we do do weekly or daily classes. So um, for the asana part of yoga, uh, we do classes probably uh, three to four a day. Wow. Uh, we offer a learn to meditate class where we systematically go through. Um, it's four classes, so we run it every month and try to help people develop their own sitting practice. Mm. So um, we, we do that. We also have community sitting sessions where uh, some of them are guided, some of them are silent, um, but we invite members of the community to come and meditate together. And that's a free of charge, uh, just something, sometimes it's a little easier to meditate with a group of people for some reason. Energy is a little stronger. Sure. So we do that. We also do workshops. We have another senior teacher coming in from the main office in Scranton uh, at June 7th and 8th, and her name is Sherry Fredrickson. Oh, yeah, that's she's right. She's been, awesome. Yeah, she, she's been teaching for over 30 years internationally. She's going to do a workshop for us on the chakras, and she's also doing some continuing training for our teachers. So once you become a yoga teacher, there's we, we still want everyone to keep growing, keep learning, uh, so we to try to provide that and make it as easy as possible. Oh, yeah. And she is she is amazing. I had a class with her in, in uh, the home office, and uh, I just love, she just radiates. There's so many people there at the home office, and you included, Kate. You just radiate, you know. The, and it's not just, it, it, I should say, it's very, very humble. I mean, that's one of the hallmarks, I think, of, of Pandachi and all of the teachers I've met, uh, Rolf and, uh, you know, all of them. They are so humble. None of them... I mean, they truly are living the practice, I think. I think that that is, uh, yeah, a common common among everyone is we're doing the practice, we're, we're working on our own uh, minds and in our own lives, and as we do that, things become more peaceful, like I said before, radiating out to everyone we, we meet. And one so. of the things I, I love about uh, this organization, too, is the amount of real tangible, charitable work that goes on out there. And do you want to tell a little bit about the uh, the center in Cameroon, Africa? I just, I just Yeah, we this. have a, a couple different centers, um, uh, humanitarian centers. We have one in Cameroon, Africa. We have one in Mexico City. We have one in India, which is uh, for the Tibetan refugee community. And uh, what we're doing there is uh, creating... Um, trainings for and helping them become sustain, uh, sustainable within their own communities, um, teaching them trades like carpentry, jewelry making, um, et cetera, and then um, also uh, providing, you know, avenues to sell them in the U.S., uh, but, but truly it's about um, the community working together and finding things that are going to be useful within their own community. Uh, so there is definitely yoga being done there, but it's more focused on uh, lifting people up and giving them opportunities. Right, right. It's just, it's beautiful work. And, you know, when you talk about the the asanas, the, the postures, what most Americans think of as yoga, and then there's the meditation, and then the pranayamas, the, the breathing exercises, we still haven't even covered half of what the yoga teachings are as, as teachings, right? Do you want to cover the rest of those real quick? Sure. <laughs> Real quick. Well, one thing that Panaji says is I, I thought was very interesting is that, you know, just by doing the asana, we have so many people doing asana out there right now. Just by doing asana, you awaken the centers within yourself that uh, make you more curious about the deeper levels of yoga. So even, even just starting with asana 
is wonderful because you will, um, those centers will be opened up and you'll naturally start to move towards, you know, relaxation t techniques, towards meditation techniques, um, towards seeing the effects within your relationships. Um, you know, I think uh, one thing that yoga has really helped me with is just being a wife and a mom. Mm. Um, you know, I react differently uh, with my kids and my husband, uh, and I really look uh, to have balance in all aspects of my life. And and you really need that because you married the only other Sven in all of Western Pennsylvania, as far as we know. Is that right? I think so. Yes, <laughs> yes. There aren't too many of you out there. No, You're, you are true gems. Yes, we Very are. Rare. We are. <laughs> Very rare, at least. Yeah. Well, I know Sven's a great guy too. Uh, he's uh, he's still doing his hypnotherapy, right? He is, yeah, and you know we do our practice together. So he's doing the meditation practice with me, and it really does help yeah. to have someone that you know, a partner that's actually doing the same thing that you're doing and supporting you. So we try to support each other in that, and you know, the kids they just kind of take off on their own. They <laughs> they love the energy, and they are doing just what they should be doing as kids. Yeah, well, I think you really uh, exemplify the the healthy attitude that one can achieve from yoga i mean all aspects of your life just seem to radiate and uh I really oh, love that. thank you yeah so okay that's uh that's about all the time we have for today why don't you go ahead and give us your the contact information how to get a hold of us how can we find you online how do we get tickets give us all the good vital statistics here uh, it's pretty easy uh our website is hipyoga.org Hip uh, Himalayan Yoga Institute Pittsburgh, yeah. HIPyoga.org, and our phone number is 412-344-7434. Uh, you can also email me at kate at hipyoga.org uh, with any questions, and I can help you get set up. That's great. Well, thanks for being with us today. This has been most informative, and of course, there's always way more things to talk about with yoga than there is time to talk about it. Thanks. It's been fun. Thanks. All right. So next, we're going to watch a uh, video. There's a lot of videos out now about the power smoothies or who's got the best smoothie. And this one's kind of interesting. When First, let me say that when we first conceived of the Journal of Lifestyle Medicine and we started to think about you know, bringing journalists on board to tell their health story, mm -hmm. um, I, I thought that was really important because I long ago noticed that Many of the people in the integrative medicine field on the professional side got there because of their own health crises, and they discovered firsthand the the gaps in the system, in the, in the traditional healthcare system. So I saw that for many years with many of the professionals, some of the best professionals too, all survived their own health crises. Then I started to come across journalists who have some of the same kinds of things. And um, you, you've heard some of those stories here on this podcast. And so I'm looking for more journalists that want to tell the story of health. And um, this next one's kind of interesting because it's a new health coach, but you've probably seen him on TV a few times. It's Sheldon Ingram from Channel 4, and he is now a CHHC, which as far as I know stands for Certified Holistic Health Coach or Counselor. It's one or the other. But he is a brand new staff member at Epiphany Counseling and Wellness Center in Murraysville. My old friend Diane Dean has put together a great crew of professionals out there uh, teaching all the best of lifestyle medicine that you you want to learn about. So the newest member is Sheldon Ingram. He's going to be a future guest on our podcast. But first, let's take a look at his video. Welcome to the unique Power Breakfast Smoothie demonstration. And before we get started, we want to make sure that we have a really good blender to put all of these wonderful ingredients together. Here, this is a Vitamix. It's very popular and I use it every single day. If you don't have a Vitamix, you definitely want something that's as strong that can handle all of these cool ingredients. So we're gonna start by putting in some water inside this Vitamix. And uh, I generally put in something about one third of the way, like that. And then we're gonna start with our greens. We talked about the spinach and kale that you saw on the, saw on the ingredients list. And this is what we have here, about a handful 
of the greens, spinach and kale together. They go first. And then we're going to go with our other combination of beets, mushrooms, and carrots. They go in next. And we're going to go with the avocado. Remember how important our avocado is. And real quick way to get to your avocado is you want to take it the long way. Take the knife and do a little jab. Rotate your avocado with the knife still intact all the way around until you do a 360. Then twist it apart. See, the avocado is ready. So now you get yourself a good ripe avocado, and you just grab a spoon and you just dig. And you want to dig as deeply as possible so you can get as close to the skin of the avocado, so you can get some of those real great nutrients that are in there. You see that? And we're going to just scrape it some more to as close to the skin as possible. And then. We're going to add some raw honey. And remember how important the raw honey is. And this is going to add a little bit of sweetness to it. About a teaspoon. That's all you need. No more. And now we're going to start the first blending process. So, you let it run for a few seconds. down and we, then, we start the second process. This is where we add our superfoods. And so we're going to start with the hemp seed and maca. And you know what they're all about after reading about them on the ingredients list. And after that, we're going to go with something that I carry on my website. It's called Pure Nourish. This is a vegan protein powder. And two scoops gives you 11 grams of protein and it has uh, probiotics as well, as well as other vitamins and nutrients that go along with it to supplement what we already have. And if you're an athlete or if you're someone that really works out a lot and you want more protein, such as myself, I use what is called uh, Vega Sport. This is a vegan protein powder. One scoop gives you 25 grams. So with that and the Pure Nourish, I have 35 grams of protein. If you want to just go with the Pure Nourish, something smaller in your protein content, and only get 11 grams of protein, you can have the option of doing that as well. Now, the superfood, the goji berries. We add one to two scoops of goji berries in there. And then the last ingredient that we're going to put in there, two cups of mixed berries. You have your blackberries, raspberries, strawberries, and blueberries. And this is two cups, like so. And now we're ready to start the last phase of our living process. You're going to let this run for about one minute. And basically your smoothie is done. There it is. There is your unique power breakfast smoothie. And what's so cool about this is that you can drink it at home or you can put it in a shaker mug and take it with you to work or wherever it is that you want to go. So it's loaded with a ton of nutrients. It has a fabulous taste and you can take it anywhere with you, wherever you want to go, first thing in the morning. It's very fast, it's very convenient, but more importantly, it's highly nutritious and very delicious. Thanks for joining me for your unique Power Smoothie Breakfast episode. So that video and many more like it are available on our website and on our YouTube page. So that's it for today. This is the Journal of Lifestyle Medicine podcast. I want to thank our guest, Kate Kill from the Himalayan Institute in Pittsburgh. Make sure to follow us on Facebook. You can follow the podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, and YouTube. And remember to um, check out our Integrative Medicine Professionals Meetup group on meetup.com. And until next time, yuns be careful out there.